And now you can see what I'm dealing with. This used to be a lot less overgrown a while back. Now I'm going to take my time and use my walking pole, but more about that later. So, what have I been doing in the meantime? Well, obviously that job, and playing a bit more with uh, VR, or virtual reality, in the truer sense. I've got some stuff to review and talk about. Whoa, this is messed up. I'm having a proper adventure in the woods. And this, this gives me hope that uh, nobody's been around here for a while. Uh, whilst I'm juddering about quite a bit, I'm uh, hopeful that the gimbal is taking care of it. Still using the uh, Jeune Pro 4. You know, I think these slip marks are the ones that I left last time I was here. That's a while back. Well, always carry a stick. Lots of Himalayan mountain balm. Uh, unless I was to really get into setting fire to all this shit. Which would be arson and dangerous in woodland where there's all sorts of other stuff. There's nothing I can do about it. Sorry if the sound quality has gone for a burton, but it really has been uh, tricky to get through that bit. So yeah, I'm alive and well and in a much better job. Pays more, more fun, better hours, and cool people to work with. Not that some of the people that I work with weren't cool, but yes. There might be a few people watching this video in a few different ways. And again, we'll get to that shortly. Oh. It gives me a lot of hope that I'm not going to be disturbed because I might be the only person that's come through here in a while. My way through here a little bit but I know the route well enough to know that there's no other way through it could be a problem At least it's going to take a little while to grow back, but I do need to be precisely here Even though it seems a little bit destructive what I'm basically having to deal with is brambles the sound quality wasn't too messed up I'd be tempted to take it out and edit it but you know 
sure glad I brought my walking pole. <clears throat> Should have brought some eye protection. Ugh. Too far now. Yeah, so we're more or less here. Hold on. So this is the tent. It's got uh, a velcroed restraining strap that isn't attached to the tent which could be handy or it could be the thing that you lose so that undoes like that and then the tent rolls out and there rather unhelpfully is a bag of pegs So it's just six feet long. Um, if you were very tall, you wouldn't be able to fit into it, but I'm of average height. And it's about three feet wide, but it does have a pretty big vestibule. Okay, so I'm not gonna dick about going through the whole setup process. If you want to, you can watch the 360 movie of me setting it up from this point in, and that'll also be on the Rangers, the Urban Agogi, and the Culture. YouTube channels. Okay, so I'm going to see you in a bit and I'm going to put it up. Right. right, so uh, this is it pegged out to start with. Over there, if you're very observant, you can see my 360, my Samsung Gear 360 camera that's videoing the whole thing and I can't do much editing on that and I can't edit the sound easily because of the way it renders 360 degree video but if you want to have a look around the campsite this would be a good time on that but around here I've got the back and the front pegged in and the main support of this tent is your hiking pole you only need one hiking pole or a stick 116 centimeters long according to the blurb so that's a useful thing to remember if you're considering this tent it was 65 pounds on eBay but I possibly could have got it for as low as 50 so 50 quid for a super lightweight hiking tent which weighs um, under two pounds so less than a kilo for a whole shelter thing which seemed like really good weight to usefulness ratio for me so yeah let's get back to it so there we have it the Underwood aggregator I mean it sounds like an English brand but I think it's pretty much made in China so you can see, I think that would be a very resilient tent in high wind. I bet you could probably tinker with it and get a better, flatter place to put it up and get it even more taut than that. But yeah, so I'll come back to you when I've camped in it overnight and tell you how I feel. But uh, I needed to get out and make a video and this seemed as good a reason as ever. So, the whole of the front of this is a door. So this side's a door, that side's a door, but also like a really large dry vestibule inside. I don't know if you can make that out, let me just... Uh... You can see there's a lot of room for your gear. There's even room for your gear inside the very nicely meshed thing. So, hold on a second, let me close this all up. Now, you can have either door open on this, but one of them does have to be pegged out to give the main walking pole something to basically balance off. As you can see, the walking pole is uh, just inside there on the inside of the mesh net, or you can have it on the outside, it really doesn't matter. If you've got the spike on your walk-in pole exposed, there's a little metal cleat that you can jam it into just outside the vestibule. 
just outside the main part of the tent. And if we go down here, oh, you can just see it there. So you can put the spike of your walking tent in that metal cleat, although you don't have to. Um, so yeah, it depends on how much weather you were going to get and how much you wanted to jam it into the ground. That could be a handy feature. Not something you couldn't make yourself. And the, the mosquito net opens either side. So we're going to open up the big side. And should you want to, you can toggle it out of the way there. So inside, it's uh, like a very, very tall bivy bag, if you can see that. And uh, let's get inside. So I didn't bring any other camping equipment with me. Whoa. Let's uh, get back. There's, I would say there's easily enough room in here. As a tent, it's much roomier than a hammock. Right down the end there, if you can see, there's a vent and the whole of the side of the tent is a vent. So yeah, providing you've got a nice pack mat and a nice sleeping bag and a good pillow, you could get a very good night's sleep in here, I think. Um, time only remains to be seen. I, would, I was thinking about sealing the seams, but an awful lot of them appear to have already been silicon sealed. So yes. So there you are, the Underwood Aggregator. It's been uh, given some stick on YouTube and other places, but I think for the money and for the weight and the fact you can use your walking pole as the tent pole, so you get dual use out of that. And you could even, I reckon without too much grief, go camping just with one of those little 25 litre backpacks if you really wanted to. If you really wanted to go Spartan or you're going with someone else and you could double up on kit. I think it's a really doable tent. So uh, maybe I'm going to try an overnight out of one of those. I haven't yet slept in it overnight, but I can't see it being much of a problem. I've just got to dig out some other kit and go super lightweight. I'm not really prepared to compromise on a sleeping pad or a sleeping bag, but I reckon I could get everything I need. So that might be next weekend's gig or sometime soon where I actually camp out overnight. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it is. I uh, just thought you'd like to see that and it was about time I did a video so you know it's nice to be back drop a comment in the post tell me how you feel and uh, yeah love to hear your comments but for now toodaloo so that's about that then a relatively cheap backpacking tent that weighs less than two pounds well maybe a little bit over two pounds but certainly less than a kilo that uses your hiking pole as its main tent support takes five minutes to put up five minutes to take down yeah, I mean, if you didn't know where you were going in the world and there was the chance of forest, I mean, you could almost take a lightweight hammock and that tent if you really wanted to. So you could be out of the, nicely out of the wind in quite a lot of different circumstances. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. I will attempt to make whoop, more movies soon. Apologies for the sound quality. But uh, yeah, nature has taken back this part of the wood pretty hard. Yeah. So, thanks for watching and do take care and I'll see you next time.